Welcome to MEP Techniques channel. Today. In this video, we are going to learn about 16 important question related to piping equipment and piping layout. Before we are going to start the video, please subscribe us and also join us on other social networking channels. Now, let's start the video. Number 1. What are the steps involved in plant design? Answer. The mechanical design and development of the plant has three major steps as a. Conceptual layout design b. Equipment layout design c. Piping layout design Number 2. What is conceptual layout design? Answer. It is the part of basic engineering package. It consists of following information. A. Essential process design requirement such as horizontal and vertical relationship of equipment. B. Space allocation for basic plant requirement, space required for laboratories, office, storage, etc. C. Planning for control room, motor control center room, etc. Number 3. What is equipment layout design? Answer. It is the detailing of conceptual layout. It is the basic document of mechanical engineering design, or in other words this document is the basis for development of construction, drawing by all disciplines. It is sometimes also referred as plot plan for a large outdoor plant. It consists of following information. A. Floor space needed for the equipment and other facilities are shown. B. Access, removal space, cleaning area, storage space, and handling facilities are outlined. Number 4. What are the essential data and documents required for preparation of equipment layout? Answer. The essential data or documents required for preparation of equipment layout is as A. Process flow diagrams, PFD, and piping and instrument diagrams, P and ID. PFD and P&ID indicates the interconnectivity of each equipment, information regarding solid handling, gravity feed, line slopes, loop sizes, venting requirement, special piping materials, etc., which in turns governs the equipment location to a great extent. B. Project design data. This consists of following information as geographic location, proximity to roads and railway topography and local codes and regulations, weather conditions such as rainfall records, seasonal temperature differences, wind direction, outlet points for drains, etc. The above information, such as wind direction influences the location of cooling towers, furnaces, stacks, etc. Similarly, the information regarding outlet drain points affects the design of storm water. Drains and requirements of enclosures. See Equipment Sizes and Building. This includes fabricated equipment such as vessels, heat exchangers, reactors, tanks, and proprietary equipment like pumps, compressors, furnaces, etc. For locating the above, the equipment is grouped to have optimum location for minimum pipe run as well as follow the process flow sequence. Number 5. What are the two basic configurations for the equipment layout, unit plot plan? Answer. The equipment layout can basically be divided into two configurations. A. The grade-mounted horizontal arrangement as seen in the refineries and petrochemical plants. B. The vertical arrangement as seen in many chemical process industries. Number 6. What is grade-mounted horizontal arrangement of equipment layout? Answer. In the grade-mounted horizontal arrangement, the equipment is placed on the either side of the central pipe rack with auxiliary roads. Advantage of this arrangement is that the equipment is located at grade level, which makes it easier to construct, operate and maintain. Disadvantage is that it takes lot of ground area. Number 7. What is vertical arrangement of equipment layout? Answer. The structure-mounted vertical arrangement has equipment located at multilevel in steel or concrete structure. This could be indoor or outdoor. Advantage is of small coverage area and ability to house the facility to suit process requirement or climate conditions. Number 8. 
What are the basic principles of locating the equipment irrespect of the type of arrangement? Answer. The certain basic principles to be followed while locating the equipment is as a. Economic piping. In order to minimize the cost of piping, the equipment should be located in process sequence and close enough to suit safety needs, access requirements, and flexibility. The equipments are identified which forms the subsystem within the unit. The component within the subsystem to be arranged to have most economical piping and the whole subsystem to be arranged within the unit to have most economic interconnection. B. Process Requirement The equipment layout should support requirement like minimum pressure drop. Gravity feed and loop. C. Common Operation the equipment that requires common maintenance facilities, common utility, and continuous operator attention shall be located the same area. D. Underground facilities. Before deciding the equipment location, the facilities such as storm water drain, effluent drain, fire water, cooling water, to be placed underground. Number 9. What is line routing diagram? Answer. A line routing diagram is a schematic representation of all process and utility piping system drawn on a copy of plot plan. This diagram does not show the exact locations, elevations, or interference, but it locates the most congested area. Number 10. How do you calculate the width of pipe rack? Answer. W equals F into N into S plus A plus B, where F, safety factor equals 1.5 if pipes are counted from PFD, equals 1.2 if pipes are counted from PNIDN, number of lines in the densest area up to size 450 NB, equals 300 mm, estimated average spacing, equals 225 mm, if lines are smaller than 250 NB. A. Additional width for lines larger than 450 NB for instrument cable tray and duct. For electrical cable tray. S, 300 mm, estimated average spacing. 225 mm, if lines are smaller than 250 NB. B, future provision. Equals 20% of, F into N into S, plus A, number 11. Up to what limit the width of pipe rack is restricted. What type of arrangement shall be done if the width of rack calculated is more than the restricted limited? Answer. Normally pipe rack width is limited to 6.00 meters. If the width of rack calculated is more, then the arrangement shall be done in multiple layers. The arrangements adopted are A. Single column rack T-type B. Double column rack with a single tier C double column rack with a double tier. Number 12. How much space is kept in between column of pipe rack? Answer. Normally, 5 to 6 MTRS. Spacing is kept in between the column of pipe rack. Number 13. At which location the wide spacing, spacing more than the normal, in between the column is necessary? Answer. Wide spacing is necessary at road crossing or where loading or access space is needed. Number 14. How much headroom clearance is required under the following type of crossing? A. Structure slash pipelines inside operating area. B. From top of the rail. C. Above crest of road for crane movement. D. Above crest of road for truck movement. E. Above crest of road between process units. Answer. The headroom normally provided is as, dash. A. Structure slash pipelines inside operating area. Is 2200. B. From top of the rail. Is 7000. C. Above crest of road for crane movement. Is 7000. D. Above crest of road for truck movement. Is 6000. East above crest of road between process units. Is 4500. Number 15. What sort of drawing slash layout is required for piping layout? Answer. The following drawing and layout are required for piping layout. A. 
Piping and Instrumentation Diagram, P and ID. B. Equipment Layout. C. Piping Specification. D. Equipment Drawing. E. Vendor Requirement for Proprietary Equipment. Number 16. What care shall be taken while routing piping for instruments? Answer. Following points shall be taken care of while routing piping for instruments. A. Flow measuring instrument needs certain straight length on upstream and downstream of the instruments. Normally, 15D on the upstream and 5D on the downstream is kept. B. The pipeline in which flow meters such as magnetic flow meters, vortex meters, turbine meters, etc. are located shall be routed in such a way that the line must be filled with liquid all the time. The pipeline shall be supported with robust support on both sides of the meter. C. Control valves are located at grade EG at about 500 mm height from finished ground to provide convenient access for operation and maintenance. Block and bypass valve shall be located to have easy operation slash access from the grade. Locating control valve on the vertical line shall be avoided. De-isolation valves for level gauges and pressure gauges shall be made accessible. All primary and secondary indicators of pressure, temperature, flow, level, positioners etc. shall be visible from the operating area. E. Rotometer shall be placed on vertical line and the inlet shall be from the bottom of the instrument. Thanks for watching the video. Please do not forget to subscribe the channel.